everyone. Welcome back to another art session with me. This is Marcy and Prints and Paints. It's really good to see you again. So today we are going to do something very simple. This is going to be geared towards more of the beginner painter and I wanted to start a series of doing very simple, very quick tutorials. So the scale is going to be a little bit smaller. So if you are advanced and you want to try something a little bit more challenging, I do have other videos that you can check out or you can just get inspiration for the color palette for this one and start, you know, uh, whether it's a centerpiece and you work your way out, you can always use this design for incorporating into your larger mandalas. So today, saying that, the items we're going to be using, we're going to be working on a six inch mandala. So a lot tinier than I'm used to but I'm excited to try it out. So I cut this myself. This is a MDF hardboard. It is in the thickness of a quarter of an inch thick. You can find these probably online. You can try Amazon. I like a company called Neat Company. He is really great. He's on Etsy and he cuts all of his mandalas perfectly and sells them in packages. I think their prices are very fair. And so if you want to support small business, that's the way to go. Otherwise, yeah, check online or cut them yourselves, guys. Be brave and try it yourselves. All you need is a jigsaw and a, you can buy a big sheet of this stuff at Home Depot for $10 so you can save yourself a lot of money. Anyway, these are six inches, so you're gonna need a six inch. I'm also going to be using a compass this time. I'm not going to be using my ruler. If you would love to use my ruler, by all means, please go ahead. It's just, it's a much smaller scale, so I really don't need to be making a ton of my guidelines. So I'm going to try my hand at using a compass today and I have a cream color watercolor pencil in there by the brand Artesia and I'm also going to be using a eight segment stencil. So this is just to make those segment lines and that's that. So then we're also going to be using our tools. So our tools, we're gonna to be a variation of different things. They're really my go-tos. And so if you've been painting along with me, you know the routine and what I mainly use. I try not to change it up too, too much. I know I haven't been using Mark's mandalas in a while, but I do find myself going back to my DIYs. I just love them. I love the weight like, that they have and they've never really failed on me so far. They are very durable. So I'm using my DIY dotting tools. You can use something else by all means, like I get. Just keep in mind that the size may alter slightly. I'm also gonna be using my, my set of my stylus that I always use. These are the set of five. They have five sizes to them. I am also going to be using possibly this small clay tool and I just use this to pull my swooshes when I dot them if they're nice large and I want a more precise look to them. I have a few brushes here whoop, of swooshes. So I have a small, medium and large. You can use whatever brushes you like. I have a really small one that I like to use for just doing touch-ups at the end. Sometimes you get those little dots around from picking up your tool and moving it. So I like to use this to touch up anything. I have a silicone tip here, which is really just for mixing paints. And then to go with that, I also have a palette knife that sometimes if I'm mixing a large amount of paints, we can do that. I also have this white watercolor pencil by the brand Yoki. This is just if I need to draw any designs and things like that. I might just switch over to using my Artesias because I already have it. And I have Q-tips just in case I need to clean up any messes that I make. I'm going to be using a tray. So if you want to use that or you can use little paint pots, it's up to you. The colors we're going to be using are this palette right here. So this palette is by the artist and brand named Stitch Palettes. She is on Pinterest and I can leave a link to her description. She makes wonderful paint palettes. So 
definitely check her out and you know give her a follow because she really does make amazing color palettes so this is going to be our color palette so these colors in particular aren't designed for deco art americana so i did find ones that were fairly sim similar in tones and so i'm going to be using these colors okay so for our navy blue i'm going to be using prussian blue for the dark violet, I'm going to be using Poetic Plum. For violet, I'm going to be using Purple Pizzazz. The light terracotta color, I'm going to actually, I mixed it. So by mixing it, I used Buttermilk and I used Coral Cloud. So these two I mixed together. I did a one-to-one -one ratio and that's how I got this color. It's very like flesh tone color. It's like a skin tone, kind of like apricot or something like of that nature when looking at a crayon. It does look like a very skin tone kind of color, okay? The light golden brown, I'm going to use honey brown. And the dark autumn gold, I'm going to be using cinnamon stick. So those are my colors. I might even throw in a bit of blush pink. This is all not on here, but I do like that the colors kind of go together. So we might use blush pink as well. I'm also going to be using my pouring medium just to be mixing and diluting my paints down to thin them out. And that is all you are going to need. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm just basically going to be using my Deco Art Americana's Lamp Black color and I'm going to be adding just a touch of it on here and I'm going to be using a fan brush just to spread out my paints. I'm going to do a nice thick coat of this. You don't really necessarily have to use a gesso for working on wood sometimes if you find that it's absorbing it but I do find that MDF is very very dense and uh, I never have a problem with having to do a lot of coats of this. Lamp Black also is a very nice rich color. It's a nice dark tone so it doesn't really shine through. We're going to want to do the sides and the front and back of this so keep that in mind. Okay guys, so we're back and we have finished painting our base coat of our mandala. You should have the sides, the back, and the front done. The next step you're going to want to do, if you haven't already, is find the center of your mandala. If you need to watch, I have a video in my how-tos on how to find the center of your mandala if you're unsure. If you already have it, we can move on and start from here. So I'm going to use a basic compass. Like I said, if you want to use the ruler, by all means, go right ahead. I'm just going to use this today. I'm trying to switch it up a little bit. So what I did is all I have, I, I don't go by this particular part of my, my compass. I just feel like this one's already pretty old and beat up and I don't trust that this is exactly a quarter of an inch. So all I do is I take like the a basic ruler and I start at the zero and this one's nice because it's plastic so I can actually punch into it and I'm just going to move this down to the quarter inch mark just like so. I might have to move ooh, this in just a tad. See this one gets a lot stuck, like really stuck. This is probably why I invented the ruler thing. <laughs> so I'm just going to start there and I'm going to work my way around. And like I said, I'm just going to be doing every quarter of an inch mark. And then once I do this, I'm going to get out my eight segment stencil and I'm going to do my segment lines as well. Okay guys, so you should have a Amanda that looks simpler to this. So you have your quarter inch guidelines and your eight segments. I did not show this in the beginning of the video, but I do want to use one of these circle templates. I have used these in the past in my videos. If you don't have one, 
you can try to find or download something that has the size one and a half because that's what we're going to be using today and just to show you what we're going to do if you notice on these they have these little tick marks let's see if we can zoom in so that you can actually see this so if you notice there's tick marks on the sides and there's some at the top and that's just to make sure you know where your center point is going to be okay so for this case we're going to do four circles they they are going to semi overlap each other which is fine that's what we want so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my left side of my tick right here on my one and a half inch circle and I'm gonna line it up so that it butts right up against that hole, the center hole that I made. And I'm also making sure that this line lines up with my segment line going straight across. So that's what I want to do first. Once I have that down, I can trace out my circle just like that. So it should look something like that. I'm going to turn it and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do this. There's the other one. I'm going to do this two more times. So I'm turning it. And this one kind of represents, I believe it's the seed of life. I don't remember. It kind of looks like a flower, but I believe it's the, the Amandala geometric designs. And I believe it's the, the seed of life or something similar to it. I know it has this element in it. So you should have something like that when you're finished. So to zoom out a little bit. And then from there, we're going to do a little bit of a design. I'd say right here, we're going to do some walking dots. We're going to do walking dots on this end, up here, and on this one. And then the other part, this whole area, we're going to do some swooshes. So something like that. So if you want to sketch it out, just so you know what you're working with, so you don't goof up and paint the wrong area. That's fine too. Now, I do want to say that I was inspired by this design by a, an artist called Daydream Daughter. She's on Instagram. Forgive me, I don't know her first name, but she's an amazing artist. I'll leave a link in the description of her artwork and you can check her out. I would probably like to start doing this as well and that's showcasing other artists even if you, my viewers, have something that you'd like to share and maybe we can all paint it. I think that would be a lot of fun. I can try to learn the design and then teach it to everybody else if they don't mind and I would credit the artist. I think my channel would be something different because we're all learning someone else's designs and I think that's great and as long as we give credit to the artist and praise the artist then everybody's happy. So. I do believe as an artist myself that it's important to praise the person who has designed the thing that you may be interested or inspired by because we all get inspired by so many people and so many objects and everything in the world. So just keep that in mind. Check her out if you can. So we're going to go into our colors. I'm going to have to mix my colors. I'm going to probably with this Prussian blue, because we are working on a black background, I think I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a series of tints with it. If you're not familiar with tints, tinting just means that you add some paint to like a paint tin like this, like a paint pot and you add some white and each one you gradually make lighter as you go. So I think I'm going to do some tints, just a couple colors. And so if I want to use them, we can incorporate in that and it'll give that nice gradient look to it. Probably just this one because it is the darkest, okay? I think the rest of my paint colors, we have our purples here and our light pinks and then our warm earthy tones 
and then we also have like our peachy color so I think you know working with these colors and then this one's very dark so I want to be able to see this one so we are going to make some tints with it so I'm gonna quickly mix my paints and we'll meet you back okay guys so I mixed all of my paints so I mixed my buttermilk my cinnamon stick my honey brown I did remember the one-to-one -one ratio by using one part paint and one part pouring medium if you want to use Floetrol water that's fine I'm using Poetic Plum I mixed. I mixed the Purple Pizzazz, the Blush Pink, and then my Prussian Blue. I mixed with my Warm White color. And I just did three of them. So this is what they look like. Let's see if we can focus in on them. There. So it's, it's not a drastic jump. I just did about I'd say a squirt or so in the bottom of each one. I did more for this one and a little bit less for this one and then a little bit less on this one and added white as I needed it just to make these three different colors. If you don't have it exact, don't stress out about it. Even if you have other color blues that are similar to this in different shades, then use them. It's okay. This doesn't have to be like exactly like mine. And then Again, this is the peach color that I had made by using the coral cloud and the buttermilk color. So to start off, we're going to dot these circles with a perimeter of the buttermilk color. And we're gonna do a small dotting tool. So I'm going to probably use my number one, actually, for this one. It's gonna be very small. And I'm just gonna use buttermilk and I'm just gonna start with one of the circles. So I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see. And let's focus. And I'm gonna start with the center. Center dot, I'm just gonna try to actually fill that in a little bit because my compass kind of destroyed that center dot. It really made it a lot wider. So. I'll fill that in with some paint and then I'm just gonna keep going. So I'm just dotting my dots on that line and I'm going all the way around. Try not to get too confused and make sure you're paying attention to what line you're, you're dotting on. You don't wanna screw up and do a different line there or like do your segment line. You don't wanna be doing that. Make sure you're following that, that circle. So these dots are just going to be a series of dots like this. And then we're going to do all of them like that. I'm going to do a quick time lapse just so we can speed this up. So we finished our dotting our circles, our center pieces there. So there's going to be a few areas that we can actually work on and, and, and do. We're going to be doing a design element within this area. We're also going to be doing something within this area. I think we're going to let the white dry first, so we're going to continue on the outer part first, and then we'll go back into doing that. So what I would like to do first is probably the walking dots. So I'm going to focus on the areas that I drew out like so. So this one, this one, this one, and the top. And then the other ones have your swooshes. So we're going to focus on these with this segment line going straight through. Okay. We're going to use our honey brown. So I'm going to use my number eight dotting tool. And I'm just going to go into my honey brown and I'm gonna dot right on the next line here, my honey brown, just like that. And I'm gonna do that for the other ones as well. So we'll do one on this segment line as well. Turn it so it's facing me. One right here, and then one right there, just like that. Good, now, what I want you to do is grab your three colors, whether you made them or if you're using something else. 
we're gonna go with our I think we're gonna go with white first so I'm gonna do one real quick with white so I'm gonna use my size one and I'm gonna go into my buttermilk again and the buttermilk it's just gonna because I I have a lighter color too that I want to do a different design with so I'll show you what I mean when I get this going I'm just mixing up my paint real quick the humidity has been kind of high in here where I'm working so my paints dry fast so I'm just gonna keep refreshing them if you don't mind so I'm going into my buttermilk with my size one and I'm just gonna do the basic walking dot technique so I'm dotting in the center of that segment line and then I'm just I don't go back into my paint I just keep walking that dot up until it becomes very small and tapered if you find that your dots are still big as you get to the end that's an indicator that you need to just clean off your dotting tool you have too much paint on it I like to after like say if I did this one right here now I'd go and probably clean this off or at least do both sides and now I'll clean this off and I always do that I make sure that I get in the habit of doing that you'll get better results Good. I think I'm gonna up my size so I'm going to go with my my blue one which is my size 3 and I'm gonna go that's gonna sound kind of strange because I'm going backwards in colors but I'm gonna go with my my middle tone blue first this one the middle the middle tone and Again, I'm doing the same technique, so I'm just going to dot and then walk my dot up. I'm not going to get that many dots, if you notice, and that's okay. I'll be lucky if I get four. That's, yeah, that's what I'm going to get. So don't be too alarmed if they don't look tapered like your little ones. That's okay. If you notice when I dot as well and I do my first dot and then I go up when I come back through I dot the same dot again because it helps pull some of that excess paint off because if I was to dot next to it then the sizes wouldn't look uniformed they wouldn't look the same so it's good to do that too so I dot bring it up and then I dot that one again. Seems fairly easy, right? Now I'm gonna go up to the purple, which is the size four. And I'm gonna go into my darker color, all right? So, yeah, see, I'm getting skins on my paints already. Oof. Let's see. I think it's because I have a fan on. The weather's been weird lately. It's raining a lot and everything's very damp and uh, I don't even know. So let's try this again. So see, we're gonna go up like the same technique, just a darker color. I'm also going to mix this really well because it seems like it's sticking to my dotting tool in a very strange way. Okay, let's try that again. That's better. So I know those might be a little hard to see, the darker, but that's what we're going to do. And then with the lighter color, we're going to come back down the opposite way. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to just do these next two really quick. Good. 
And now I'm going to use the same size dotting tool. I'm not going to go up in size. I'm going to use the lighter color. So I have to mix my paint again. Yeah, my paints are getting very, very dried out. That's all right. Ever guys have one of those days where like nothing goes right and you want to paint so bad and then, I don't know, paint consistency isn't right and everything is just, you know, blah. I think I'm having one of those days, so be patient with me today. So again, I'm using the lighter tone. I'm going in with my dotting tool, my size four. I'm going to start up here this time and I'm going to walk that dot down to that segment line just like that I'm curling up again we'll start over here walk it down then we'll go to do these two perfect so that's that so we can put those colors away we're done for it with them for now I'm going to close up my caps here uh, just so that they're sealed off and airtight clean off my dotting tools as well and now I'm gonna go into doing my neutral tones so right here this this little area that I have right here I'm gonna do some swooshes as well so I'm gonna do a fairly big one right here and move my way up I am gonna probably pull out my my little dotting polar tool that I have and my dotting tools as well so I'm gonna go with a size I think I'm gonna go with 10 a rather larger one and I'm gonna go into my my honey brown again and I'm just dotting on that bottom line right on the segment line and I'm gonna make sure I get a nice amount of paint on there okay that looks good and then I'll do that for all of them. I'm going to do this real quick first just so I can get that paint pulled up because we're going to pull it up into a swoosh looking design. So I'm going to take my puller and I'm just going to pull up that center right up the line like so and then I'm going to pull from the left up into the center as well like that and also I'm going to pull up from the right so you have a swoosh that looks like this. I call these like little munchkin swooshes because they're they're chunky. They're not long and tapered. So that's that. So I'll do that for each one as well. So we'll do over here. So that's good. That's done. Let's clean off our number 10. What I'm going to do too now is I'm actually going to just go two sizes down. So I'm going to go with a size 8 this time. And I'm going to go into my cinnamon stick. I'm going to take one second and I'm just refreshing my paints. That looks good. Paint consistency is really important when you're painting. You want to make sure it's right, otherwise it can become a big old mess. Alright, so with our size 8 and our cinnamon stick. So what we're going to do now is go a little bit higher in this. So I'm going to dot next to my honey brown, but on that line, if you notice. And I'm going to do one on either side. So it's going to look something like that. And then I'm just going to pull up to that part where I finished my tapered dot. So I'm going to go 
and I'm really just going from the middle straight over like so and then I'm joining this to the center and the other side as well I like using this tool because it gives you a really nice precision on you know your shapes You have to move yourself around a little just to get in there. So that's that one and we're going to do that for all three again. I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit so that you can see it and we'll do some time lapse. So we're moving along guys. So we finished our cinnamon stick. Now we're gonna, so obviously if you notice we're sticking with neutral tones at this point. We're not going into the purples just yet. So the next one I'm gonna do is my peach tone that I mixed. Again, if you don't have this, if you have a peach color, that would work great too. And I'm, I'm staying with the same dotting size tool, which is the size eight. And now, what I'm going to do is go a little bit higher. So now I'm going to dot on that next line, like that. I'm slightly above at an angle. And, and then, so when I do this one now, I might want to turn it. Because I want to come at a very sharp angle. Like that. Even if you want, you can dip this into your paint if you don't have enough to pull. Sometimes I don't have enough to pull, so I like to add some to my, my tool. As long as you get a nice tapered look at the end. you have a hard time with these and you'd rather do brush strokes and you're great at brush strokes then please by all means go ahead I just like to try different things so I'm doing with the dotting tools I also think as a beginner doing brush strokes can sometimes be a little intimidating So, let's see, let's keep going with this one, let's pull. So your t design should look something like this. And then, so you'll do that for the rest of the, the, of the three. Okay guys, so now that we've finished doing our neutral tones, the brown tones, we're going to go into our purples. So we are going to go back up into here. So be careful if you're putting your hand, you don't get this wet, okay, and smear it. So we want to finish this part right here, this larger part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I think I'm going to do my number eight dotting tool again, and I'm going to go into my poetic plum color. That's the darker purple that we have. And I'm just going to dot right in this corner where these two meet like that. I'm going to do one on both sides like so. Try not to get it in the white part. And then with one of my stylists, I like to use this thin one. This is technically like a size one. If you want to use this one, you can. Or the puller, it's up to you. But I like this one because the ball tip, it can pull a little bit better. I'm going to start from the center. And I'm just going to follow that curve while pulling paint all the way up to my center point. And then I'm going to pull from side to side to create the swoosh. And I'm just going to continue pulling that paint all the way up like that. 
So to show you to zoom in, let's zoom in and focus. So something like that. So again with this one, I'm gonna pull from the center and just follow the curve of the white dots all the way up. And all I'm doing is pulling from this base here, this paint in here, I'm pulling it up and slowly pulling it until I get to the top. I, I do want a tapered look, so go ease up on it and then join those two together at the top. And then from the left side, pull a little bit up and pull from the right and just to make that teardrop shape. So there's your two swooshes like that. Now I'll do this one first so that you can do the rest of the three because we're going to do all the similar. Then clean your, your dotting tool and we're going to go into using our purple pizzazz. This is our bright purple color. And now what we're going to do is go right below it. So we're going to dot like right there and on this side as well. And I'm going to pull that up again until I get to my center. The other side I'm going to pull and then the right side. And then I'll do this side as well. You have a little bit of a space in between and that's fine. I personally prefer it that way. If you don't, you can definitely fill it in. Just keep in mind that you may alter the shape and size of your swoosh. It might look more like a big fat boot <laughs> than a, a swoosh. Okay, there we go. That looks great. So it should look something like that. Now with the next color, so I'm going to clean off my dotting tool. I like to do these like one color per thing and go around and then obviously, but I'm just going to show you this one in particular so you guys can work on the other part on your by yourselves. So next I'm going to go into my blush pink. This is that color that I wasn't sure I was going to use, but I decided to do it. So I'm going to use my blush pink. I'm just going to mix that up a bit. Here we go. And again, I'm going to dot very gently right next to each other like so. And again, I'm going to pull up from center and go all the way up. I'm going to pull from the left. This one you could probably see a little better because of the contrast. And pull that one up. And then I'm going to pull this one up from the center and join the two. Pull the left up and the right. Good. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to go in with my, maybe my peach or my, my buttermilk and do one up the center. So I want to make sure that dries first because I'll be mixing my paints. They're so close together. So again, try that with all three of these spaces. This one, this one, and this one. All right, guys. So I finished these colors in the center like so. So I did the three colors. I am waiting for some of them to dry. As you can see, they're shiny and they are still wet. So, and in the center here, we're going to do, I think we're going to do our buttermilk color. In this little area right here, I'm going to focus on that. And I'm going to do the, the peach tone that I made. So I'm going to focus on that right now. I'm going to get out my size six and five dotting tool in the DIYs as along with probably I'd say my blue stylus for the size three and what we're going to do with this one is I'm also going to use like my size one to pull my my swoosh so I'm going to open up my container 
and get paint all over my hands. <laughs> so size six. So we're gonna dot in here. And with this portion facing you, we're gonna wanna do like we're gonna start at this little corner here and we're gonna go up at an angle. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna dot in the corner here, right in the front, very lightly. Don't squish that dotting tool down, just be kissing that center, you know, the surface, just kiss that surface. And then from here, I'm gonna take my center, I'm gonna pull it around, and you just keep pulling it until you get to the edge, and then let that tapered look stay there. So, and then fill in the sides, fill in this side as well to make a nice teardrop look and shape. And I'm just lightly like spreading that around. So that's the first one right there. Clean that off. I'm going to do this for each one too. And I'm going to flip around. Use five's going to go right above it. And I'm just kissing that surface very lightly. Again, following that curve around till I get to the edge. I'm going to fill in those sides like so. And then my last one, if I can fit it, I'm going to do a little dot right above it. And then I'm going to pull that as well. This one's super tiny. It's not even like a full swoosh. So do you see the shapes that it created? So you have your large one, you have your medium, and your small. All right. So when you do the next one, just make sure that this entire element is facing you and then you're going to do it again right here and do that one for all three of them so again so let's say six here we go yay so we got our center it looks really great so we're going to put this away and i think our paint's probably getting pretty dry now to where we can go back into our buttermilk and we can probably dot that center so let's see we're going to go back into using our size 8 and we're just going to dot that center and I'm going to do it twice just to get enough paint on there and then I'm going to take my, my small stylus and I'm just going to pull straight up straight up to that corner part and then pull at the sides making sure that there's no streak marks make sure all the paint is filled in so like that and then we'll do that for the other ones Okay, so now that we finished that with the buttermilk color, we're going to focus on this little small area here 
with our swooshes. I am going to continue to do them the way I was, but feel free to do a brush if you'd like. It's up to you. I, I like to do this technique better, so I'm going to use my size 8 again, and I'm going to go into my buttermilk, and I'd say... So where these dots stop, we're on that line right there. So we're going to go one, two, three, I'd say the third one down, hmm. maybe one, two, three, that's the third one right there, maybe the fourth one down, I think the fourth one. So first, before I do the eight, I'm going to get Sorry, I'm holding it in my mouth. I'm going to get the size 6, and I'm going to dot into the same color, and we're going to dot on the one. I'm counting this line here that you can barely see, so I'm doing one, two, three, fourth line down. And the buttermilk. Right where those lines intersect. It should be kind of like where the the second color that you had kind of joined on that line right there. This is just going to separate because I'm doing some swooshes coming down and I'm also going to do some coming up. So if we do the fourth line down, one, two, three, four. So let's do our dot first. Perfect. That's great. So now I can go back into my number eight dotting tool. Again, I'm going to dip into the same color. And right above that dot, I'm going to do another dot just like that. I'm going to get a nice amount of paint on that dot because what are we going to do? We're going to pull it up. We're going to pull right up on that segment line right until we get into that little nook. Pull from the left, and then pull from the right as well, just to make your beautiful teardrop swoosh. If you need to dip into your paint to get some on your stylus to pull, please do so. So we're going to do that for all these other ones as well. And I'm really just making that dot on that next line up, the third line down. Let's keep continuing to go. So the next one we're going to do is our honey brown. And I'm going to do the same technique, guys. So with the honey brown, we're going to go, let's see. We're going to go a little bit below. So it's going to kind of hug around. So what I mean by that is I'm going to, I'm going to dot slightly lower, 
like that than my other dot. Same over here. It's slightly lower. If you want to use the guideline as a reference, just do the next line down. I'm having the bottom part of my dot fall on that, that next line down. And then with this, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to kind of curve. I'm going to go up, but I'm also going to curve a little bit because I want those to to curve into each other. It's very easy to manipulate the way a swoosh will go just by like the way you curve it or the spacing you have in between the both. So you should have something that looks like, like that. So we'll do that for all of them as well. So we finished our honey brown. So now the next one we're going to do, same size, size 8, and we're going to do the cinnamon stick. So, cinnamon stick is going to go slightly lower, obviously. So I'm going to go on the next line. If you see, I'm centering my dot with the next line, like so. And then I'm going to pull that up as well. So if you notice, I'm pulling from the left first, on this side and at least. Pulling from the left up, pulling that left part up as well. Just so I make that nice curve. It kind of looks like a, like a music note. And then this part, I'm going to pull up into at an angle. almost as if like the teardrop is like rain and it's coming in sideways it's like going whoosh. it's I don't know <laughs> something like that okay guys so we're almost done so we finished that little section off there if you do feel the need that you want to have this spacing in between them filled in a little bit more, by all means, you can always get the paint and redot that area and then go back and fill it in a tad bit, you know, just so that you don't have so much negative space. I might even do that because I feel like some spots are, are a little too much for me. I feel like I want them to be closer together. And that's all a matter of just redotting it and then pulling your paint in to fill that in. Just a suggestion if you want to do it that way. I'm going to move on. So I'm going to go into doing this little small area now. And what we're going to basically just do is like the same type of sushes, but they're going to be kind of like backwards. So I will start about here and I'm going to do a dot and then do a swoosh around it to kind of curl up. And then from there, I'm going to do some swooshes going in this direction as well. We'll probably focus on doing the purple here, the purple tones, and even some blues maybe mixed in or something like that. So let's see. I think what we're going to do is get the lighter blue color. And I'm going to dot. I think I'm going to do a dot down here, right here on the last line and on that segment line. So again, I'm just opening up my lighter tone color. I'm gonna go back with my size eight. So really, we're just doing size eight a lot for this project, if you noticed. It's a nice medium sized dot for this size. So just one dot. Let's do that on all three of them. Right here. I like this blue with the neutral tones. I think it looks really nice. The purple's not terrible. Sometimes when you do color palettes, you don't know how it's going to turn out until you actually do it. And then you either love it or you hate it. Now it's, I like it. It's different. 
So, and then now what we can do is I'm going to get my purples out. First, I'm going to do my peach. The peach is going to be in the center. So, with the peach, what I'm going to do right here on this side of the segment line, I'm going to do a dot. And that dot, I'm going to curve up like so. Make it like kind of like a, a hook swoosh. Careful not to play with it too much because you could start changing the size of it. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. And then I'm going to bring this one up. I'm really going to try to make them even. So I'm really focusing on the spacing that I'm leaving open here and the size of the swoosh coming around, etc. That looks pretty good, that's what I want, so. Again, I'm gonna do it on all three of the other ones as well. So with this one, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Not by much, but a little bit different. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my purple pizzazz and I'm gonna do all of the swooshes this one color and then when they dry I'm gonna do a top coat of my poetic plum this is the darker tone so what I mean by that is like I'll show you I'm gonna size up the size 8 again what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm also bringing my dots down a little lower now so I'm going to go a little bit above the blue dot and kind of a little bit staggered from the peach like so. So we kind of do our Mickey Mouse ears there. And I'm going to pull this up just so it kind of meets into that little crevice there in between the peach and that honey brown. And I'm pulling these up. I'm making sure I have a small amount of space in between them because I don't want a lot of negative space. And then this side as well. So it should look something like that. Actually, since I'm doing them all, I'll just do them all right now. And then next to it, we're going to go up. So we're going to go up at an angle. So the next one, I'm going to dot next to it, like so. I remember I always pull from the center first. And then I work my way over. Some people do them a little differently. That's how I do them. I find it to be easier and more controllable when you do it that way. There we go, that's one. And when you're placing these dots, just make sure that you're placing them in the same opposite ends. So if I'm doing this one on this line, I'm going to do this one on this line. I'm also just being careful of how much space I have in between the two. I don't want a lot, so I'm trying to keep them as close as possible. You're also just going to go up till you can't anymore. You don't want to be going into your, your brown neutrals at the top up there. So that's two there, one, and two, one, two on either side. So now I'm going to go up again to the th next line, centered, on that dot. Pull from the center and kind of go over at an angle. Now 
So it should be looking something like that. We're going to probably do one more. So I'm going to go on the next line up again. And I'm just bringing that one in just to tie it together. These ones are going to be like short and stubby, but that's all right. That looks great. Just bringing this down a little bit. There we go, just like that. I'm going to bring this one down a little bit too. So your purple should look like that and you're going to have four on either side and we'll do that for the other three. Okay guys, so I finished doing my purple pizzazz in all of these areas. I don't know if you've noticed, but I also went back and I kind of filled in those negative spaces on these swooshes as well, the neutral browns. Excuse me. How I did that was... I even did these down here if you notice. I kind of made them a little larger. If you have big spaces like in certain areas that you don't care for, for example, like this small area that I have, I don't particularly like, let's see, this little area right here. I feel like it kind of doesn't flow with the rest of them. I feel like they should be closer together. This I like a lot. I think it's a very nice great. It's a graduation of swooshes going up. There's the same amount of space between them. These I fixed. I might even fix these a little bit. I'm not sure yet. I'll go back to that on my own time. But I did want to show you real quick on how can you how you can achieve that. So like for example, I'm going to fix these. I'm going to make them fill in a little bit more. So how I did that was because I used the size 8 dotting tools for most of all of these sizes, I went up two sizes, so I used a size 10. And really, that's all you have to do is make your bottom half larger so that it can have that look. So, what you want to do, and when I dot this, I want the dot, like th this edge of the dot right here, I want to be lined up with this side of my dotting tool so that the bigger part that I do when I dot it is sticking out on this end because this is the end that I need to fill in. So all I do is swoosh that around and then I start to pull this down and in there just to fill that in and I still go back to that point that I already originally had. I don't want to alter that and change that part. I want that to stay the same. And while I'm here and I'm doing this, I might as well just fill it all back in to make it one big shape. You don't have to do this, guys. I'm just kind of being in a picky mood and I didn't like the way it looked. So I'm correcting it and I figure while I'm doing it, I'm going to show you how to do it. So, so again, I'm dotting so that the big end kind of sticks out on this part. Do you see how it made that larger dot? And then this way I can take that paint and pull it in so that it's a, a tighter space in between each swoosh. Because I personally think that looks way better than it having this rinky dink like, ah, that won't work for me. So I'm going to quickly do those and then we'll come back through. We might do a swoosh here or so or some dots 
and then once it's fully dried we can go back and do some top dots on certain things and then we'll be done okay guys so we're almost done so we're just going to fill in a few more areas so i'm going to get out my my blue colors that i made i'm going to get out my medium tone and i'm just going to dot with the size six dotting tool right above that lighter tone color like that just to fill in that little space so right there we're gonna do and then we're gonna also do something else with this color as well <clears throat> I feel like we didn't use these colors enough on this palette so we have to tie some more colors in for this just a few we don't need to go crazy so what I think we're gonna do see this little area right here that we have it's kind of got this negative space in here which is great negative space is really good sometimes however I think I want to do a like a cascading dot so I'm gonna start with this last one dot here and I'm gonna work my way down so that I get down to like here I think I'm gonna go with however my size 5 dotting tool just to be on the safe side that I have enough paint on my dotting tool to do this large portion. So with that same medium blue color I have, I'm gonna get some on my dotting tool. I'm gonna dot right at there and at an angle. I'm gonna follow down just like that. And I think that's a beautiful element just to tie in that whole swoosh area. And I'll do one on this side as well and for all of the other ones that I have as well. So I'll start on this side and then work my way on my left. So that is that. That looks great. The only thing I'm going to do too, while I have this color out, actually I'm going to get the darker one out. And I'm going to do a top dot on this light one right there. Same dotting tool. So just clean off your dotting tool real quick with the medium blue and go into your darker one. And we're just going to do a quick top dot like that on our light blue color, see it? Tiny little dot. If you notice, I'm not even really dotting. That paint is pulling it right off of my dotting tool. I'm just trying to make sure that I stay centered with that. If for some reason it goes off and it gets a little wacky, then we'll have to just erase it. But I think they look good. So far, so good. That looks beautiful. Now, I think these are a little dry. They look dry. They feel dry. So, with our, yeah, Poetic Plum is the darker one. We're going to simply go, ooh, I'd say, I think we're going to go with our size three. Three dotting tool the blue one and how I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna get enough on my dotting tool I'm gonna dot the center area like so and I'm just gonna pull up as far as it takes me I don't have to go all the way up as long as you have a tail to it that's okay that's what we want so it'll look something like this And just do it really slow, guys. Take your time on this one. So see, you should have something looking like that. And those are just like your top dots. Those are nice, like, extra added dimensions. It gives it depth. So let's try this side. And if you are on a smaller swoosh, you could always turn it around and pull it with the smaller side. These seem to be okay. And like I said, I'm not going all the way up. I'm just going where it starts to taper and then I'm done. Because when you go 
too far, it starts to look a little funny. This one I like to turn around and use the smaller size. Okay guys, so we, I think we're done. I think we did enough. We could keep going if you want to be creative and keep going, keep going with your top dots. You can do every area of your swooshes and do different colors and give it a lot of dimension. I think that would be really beautiful. Even these, you could do dots on the bottom just to do little fantails. Everything would look really nice. I'm curious to know if anybody comes up with some really interesting designs. If you want to post them and tag me in them. I'm also on Facebook, obviously. I know a lot of people have found me from there. So remember, just Prince and Paints by Marcy. I'm everywhere. So wherever you put it up, tag me in it so I can see your designs. Again, look for Daydream Daughter and, you know, we have to thank her because this is her beautiful design and uh, we just changed the color scheme for it but that's all we're going to do guys so if you enjoyed this video please obviously give a like and share it with your friends and family subscribe to the channel because the more subscribers I have the better off I am and my channel can survive on this sea of YouTubers. <laughs> so your support means everything to me, obviously. And this is why I took this journey into showing you how to paint. So again, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Happy dotting as always. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right. Bye.